I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. LEDs. Can we all just agree that LEDs look awesome? Okay, enough said. <laughs> LEDs don't just look awesome. They also are functional. They can help you find your quad after you go down, or they increase the visibility of your quad if you're racing so spectators can see easier what's going on, or so you can see the other racers so you don't smash into another guy because you just didn't see him going through the gate. In fact, some races are requiring LEDs. So LEDs are awesome, and programmable LEDs are the most awesome of all. These little guys can change color or even move in little blink patterns and stuff according to what the flight controller tells them to do. And that is what we're going to learn in this video. How to set up programmable LEDs in Betaflight, including the new changes and additional features in Betaflight 4.0. They added a few things in 4.0 to change the LED functionality. Stay tuned. Let's start by just making a distinction between programmable LED strips and non-programmable LED strips. Non-programmable LED strips, you simply provide power, 5 volts, 12 volts, whatever it's designed for, and it lights up. And it's a single color, and that's the end of it. Programmable LED strips, you provide power, but you also provide a digital signal that can tell the LEDs to change color. And in fact, each of the LEDs on this strip is individually addressable. It can be addressed one by one and told to change colors. Now, the strip we're working with is from Race Day Quads, and it's pretty cool because you can actually cut it to length. So this is 24 LEDs. You could cut it to six lengths of six and put each one on the arm. You can cut two off and put them over here, and so on. Betaflight can address each of these LEDs and make them whatever color you want, and you can cut them up in any order you want. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to cut off a couple of these and I wanted to show you how to wire this up. And I also want to measure the amount of current that these guys are going to pull. Because if you're running these off the 5 volt regulator or the 12 volt regulator on your flight controller, they can actually pull more current than you might think. And we don't want to burn that out. Now to wire up the LEDs, you're going to need to identify the LED strip pad on your flight controller. It's right here on this flight controller. It's labeled LED. And we're also going to need to power the LEDs. These LEDs are rated for 5 volts, and so I'm going to run them off the 5 volt regulator on the flight controller. But you may need an external regulator. You may need to go get a Pololu regulator or something and wire it up that way, depending on how much current they pull. So coming off the flight controller, we've got 5 volts, LED, and ground. And going into the LED strip, we've got 5 volts, ground, and D, or digital input, or signal, or whatever you want to call it. Now I've just plugged in power to this flight controller and you can see that nothing's happening and that's because by themselves these LEDs don't do anything. They have to be told to light up and in order to do that I'm going to have to go over to Betaflight Configurator and make that happen. So here in Betaflight Configurator the first thing I'm going to need to do is go to the Configuration tab and turn on the LED strip function. So having enabled the LED strip feature, now when I apply power, the strip will light up. And I've got my handy dandy clamp meter here. This is the best way to measure current flow because you don't have to, you can just clamp it around the wire and measure the current. You don't have to get it, disconnect the wire and put it in series. And I want to know how much current these LEDs are pulling. We can see they're pulling about 92 milliamps. So if we were to estimate these guys at about 50 milliamps per, the exact amount of power they pull will depend on the color they're making. I think white is the most and uh, anyway. But if we estimate these guys at about 45 to 50 milliamps per, that'll get us some idea of how many we can put on a single voltage regulator. So the regulator on this guy says it's good for up to two amps. So we could get... So here I've added another section of LED strip, and I want to show you that I've made a mistake. I, I totally did this on purpose as a demonstration for you and not as by accident because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> what I've done wrong here is notice that there's these arrows on the LED strips. These arrows must always be pointing away from the sort of beginning of the chain. So I've got them wired up backwards. In every case, we need to go from the LED strip wire out and it needs to come in here and go out there. So 
you can see on these two uh, individual sections of strip, the arrows are pointing the same direction as each other. That's fine, but I've mistakenly connected it wrong to the flight controller. I need to flip this around. And here's the corrected wiring. So we've got the flight controller to the first set of LEDs, arrows pointing away, to the second set of LEDs, arrows pointing away, and so forth. You might also notice that these LEDs are numbered. So here we've got three, four, five, six, and so on. It's not essential that you maintain this numbering. That doesn't matter. So here, for example, notice I've I cut from one end of the strip and here's 21 and 22, and then here's one and two here. That doesn't matter. All that matters is that the arrows always point the same direction, sort of downstream from the flight controller. The LEDs will be assigned numbers but it's just going to be like basically this is going to be one, this is going to be two, this is going to be three and four based on the order that they appear in the wiring. Okay, let's go back to Betaflight then and figure out how to tell these guys what color we want them to be. So as I showed you before, the first thing you need to do is go to the configuration tab and make sure that the LED strip option is enabled. Then to the LED strip tab. And the first thing you got to do is you got to tell Betaflight how many LEDs you've got and you're going to choose where to put them on this grid. But one of the things that confuses people when they start is that the location of the LEDs on this grid doesn't mean anything to beta flight. As far as beta flight knows, all it is you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight LEDs, however many you have, and they are in a line. Now you can see right here that I've got all these LEDs as part of a single strip. It doesn't matter to Betaflight whether your LEDs are part of a single strip or whether you've got four on one arm, four on the other arm. All of the LEDs are always wired in series with each other. That's what these downward facing arrows are. The end of one strip goes to the beginning of the next strip. It doesn't matter how your LEDs are physically laid out on your quadcopter. To Betaflight, it's just one big string of LEDs. So I could just go wire ordering mode and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bingo. That's, that's sure, that's fine. But maybe I've got, uh, you know, four on one arm and four on the other arm and four on the other arm and four on the other arm. And maybe I've got uh, a tailgate of some kind, like a two by two array. Okay, so. You can put these LEDs on this grid wherever makes sense to you. But it doesn't matter to Betaflight. That's just a layout to help you keep track of which LEDs are which. Now, when I laid them out, notice that they went in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. The order matters. You're going to want to put the numbered LEDs in a place where it makes sense to you. So however they're wired, the first one is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So look at the way that you have wired your LEDs and go, okay, first the, the left, the front left arm from the inside to the out is zero, one, two, three. Then the wires come around and they go to the front right arm, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Think about the way that you have wired the LEDs and sequentially lay them out on this grid in a way that makes sense to you. Now, I, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to get fancy. I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine LEDs and leave it at that. Now, after you've got wire ordering mode done, the next thing I suggest you do is you play with the colors and you just verify that they're laid out like you think that they are. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to select at least one of the LEDs or let's say that the LEDs are, uh, you know, four on one arm, four on the other. You might drag and drop and select these four LEDs. We're going to change their function to color and we're going to change their color to some other color. It doesn't really matter what color. And we're going to hit save. And we got these four LEDs, red, and I, that helps me verify that these four LEDs are the ones on the front left arm. If I do this and it, a, a different set of LEDs light up than I think, then my LED numbering is wrong. Now, if my LED numbering is wrong, here's how to fix it. I'm going to go back into wire ordering mode. I'm going to take the LED or LEDs that are wrong. I'm going to hit clear selected. And then notice the numbering goes three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now zero, one, two are going to be the next LEDs I lay down. And I'm going to put them wherever they need to go. I'm just going to put them right back where they were because 
that's just a demonstration. Okay, so then by selectively turning on individual LEDs, you have verified that the LEDs numbers are all correct and the locations on the grid are where they need to be and make sense to you. Now it's time to start playing around and assigning different functions to these LEDs. And as I showed you, the simplest thing you can do with the LEDs is assign a color to them. Set the function to color. And you set these guys to color and make them a different color. And when you hit save, that'll all update. The colors that we've got here, you can adjust these colors. So if I just double click, I can change the HSV hue, saturation, and value. And if you want to find the HSV numbers for a color, just search on the web HSV calculator and it can let you pick a color and it'll tell you what the HSV values are. Just double click to change a color value. One of the things we can do with the LEDs is turn on the Larson scanner. This refers to, you know, I don't actually know why it's called a Larson scanner. I assume Larson is the guy who invented it. And if we hit save, you will probably immediately recognize this pattern of movement. Why are the red ones not? Did I not? Hang on. Oh, I didn't have the red ones selected. Hold on. Let's turn the Larson scanner on for all of these. Save. There we go. You can also cause the LEDs to change based on the things you do with your transmitter. So I can set the color modifier to be the throttle. And if I hit save, as I raise the throttle, these guys will change their color values. Now, what color values are they changing? It seems kind of random, but it actually isn't. The way it works is this. These LEDs are set to the red color. The throttle modifier will cause them to change color between the leftmost value and the rightmost value. So this is to the left of red, this is to the right of red. So when we are at 1500 throttle, these LEDs are red and these LEDs are green. When we're at zero throttle, these LEDs are white and these LEDs are a light lime green. We are at 100% throttle. These LEDs go to a kind of a teal blue and these go to an orange. So we, we could change this. For example, let's say we want the left LEDs with the throttle to go from say red to green. So we'll set these guys to white. When the throttle is down, they'll be red because red is to the left of white. When it gets to mid position, they'll be white. And when it gets to the high position, they'll be green. Now that's kind of cute, but maybe it's not exactly what you're looking for. The other things you can do is you can set this to be equal to an aux channel and you can set that aux channel to be controlled by a potentiometer. And then by using the potentiometer, you can scroll through basically all the different colors that you might want. And this might be nice if you were going to a race and you wanted to be able to change your LEDs for each run of the race. Or, you know, the race organizers might dictate what color LEDs you need. Another thing we might do is set these guys to indicate the arming state. So when we set the LEDs to indicate the arming state, we can choose a color for disarmed and a color for armed. Now they're green because we're disarmed and I'm gonna arm here and hope the quadcopter stays still. There we go. I'll change colors when they're armed. Cute, I don't know why the motors didn't start spinning, but I'm kind of glad they didn't. If I set these guys function to battery, they will change color based on the battery voltage level. And the way it does this is if the battery is full, the color is green, and then it goes through lime green, yellow, orange, red to deep pink, indicating that the battery is discharging. And you can do the same thing with RSSI. Battery and RSSI color indicator might be useful for maybe if you're a line of sight flyer. I don't think they're gonna be very useful if you're flying FPV, because you can't see them while you're flying. Maybe you could make one visible in your FPV camera, but you could also just have an OSD. If we enable the warnings checkbox here, then when there are warnings such as low battery or quadcopter's not level or anything else that's preventing arming, the LEDs will change color to indicate it. That's kind of nice. This VTX option causes the LEDs to change color depending on what channel your video transmitter is on. Now I mentioned earlier that there is some new functionality in Betaflight 4.0 for LED strip. Betaflight 4.0 adds three different LED strip profiles. These profiles are status, race, and beacon. The status profile is everything that we've been talking about, all the configurable stuff you set up here. The race profile lets you set all the LEDs easily to one color. The idea here is that you've got this fancy schmancy stuff set up, but then you go to a race and they say, we need you to have green LEDs on your quad and you don't wanna just change all the LEDs out and mess with the programming. So you just real quick go in 
you set your LED strip profile to race and you set your LED strip race color to whatever color you want. And you can type get LED strip race color to see what's available. Of course, I'm doing it here in the CLI because I'm on the I'm just sitting at my desk, but you can also do this from the OSD, which of course makes a lot more sense. If you prefer, you can also set up an in-flight adjustment to change this, similar to how you can do in-flight um, rate profile changes and so forth. It is LED profile selection right here. And you can set that up to uh, basically change your LED profile using a three position switch or something like that if you so prefer. Finally, the beacon profile is used to find a lost quad when you put it into the beacon profile, it flashes the LEDs white once per second. So that's gonna do it for this tutorial of how to get started using programmable LEDs on your quadcopter. And I say how to get started because it's fairly deep. There's a lot of different things you can do with them. And so like one video to show every possible thing you can do be a little bit overwhelming. I would say here is the order of operations that you should think about. Number one, think about how many LEDs you're gonna put on the quad and how you're gonna power them. These programmable LEDs pull about 50 milliamps each. So if you wanna put, just take 50 milliamps, multiply that by the number of LEDs you're thinking about putting on the quad and make sure you have a voltage regulator that can handle it. If you have something like a two or three amp Pololu voltage regulator, you know, that's probably gonna be, well, you could do the math for how many LEDs you could support. Once you know how many LEDs you're gonna want and where you're gonna put them on the quad, four under each arm, three on the back, two on the front, wherever you decide you're gonna put them, then you're gonna wanna mount them on the quad and wire them up. And I do say it in that order because the exact length of the wires and so forth is gonna vary. You are gonna to need to wire these guys in series with each other. Every set of LED strips is basically just one long chain. So depending on, like if you have one on each arm, you're gonna need wires running back the other direction to the next LED. There are like LED distribution boards you can get for situations where you might have a lot of LED strips and they can help solve this problem. But that is certainly something to keep in mind. They do need to be wired in series. Well, I say they have to be wired in series, but that's not exactly strictly true. And that actually helps us solve one of the problems we saw, which is that Betaflight only supports so many LEDs. I think it's like, is it 31? Is it, I don't remember the number, but once you run out of LEDs, what if you want more? The answer is that you can wire these LEDs in parallel with each other. So if we take two strips and make a Y harness, then what we're gonna end up with is two different lengths of LED strips with the same number identifier to the LEDs. If we wire these guys in series with each other, they're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, etc. But if we wire them in parallel with a Y, they're both gonna be one, two, three, four, five. So if you have a set of LEDs that you know are all gonna be the same color, then you can wire them in parallel and you can save yourself some LED numbers. The flip side is that once they're wired in parallel, they cannot be individually addressed anymore. They always share the same address. After you've got the LEDs mounted on the quad, then think about the functions you want them to have. Do you just want them to have a solid color? Do you want them to indicate something like battery voltage or RSSI, various things? And that's really easy and fun to play around with. Layout, once you've got the layout and you've got the LED numbers assigned correctly, playing with the individual functions of the LEDs is pretty easy and fun. That's going to do it for this video. Hope that helps you get your LEDs configured under Betaflight. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.